this video we will look at how to model a kitchen from a floor plan. We'll use a range of the tools at our disposal, such as importing DXF files for positioning floors and creating complex cabinets. We'll also be using standard cabinets created in previous projects. We can now start the design by starting a new project. We'll start here by importing the floor using the DXF of the schematic diagram. To enable the import, it must be a closed polyline. The surface editing window will allow any adjustments to be made, as well as configuring the thickness, texture or colour. Once imported, all that's left to do is position the walls, which will benefit from easier positioning thanks to the prior creation of the floor. Finally, all we have to do is position the various openings. These openings are created using the wall creation tool, either with transparency or by selecting a texture, such as the image of a door or window. Now that our room is in place, we'll add our cabinet library created in another typical project. Project mode allows you to import a piece of furniture or a project and extract the cabinets without modifying the previous project. This then allows us to optimise the design time of the new project. We'll start with the cabinets in the corner, which will allow us to hook the other cabinets onto the specifically positioned cabinets. The first cabinet will be positioned 20mm from the right and 180mm from the top. Then the second, let's select that from the model list on the left. 650 millimetres from the right and 20 millimetres from the top. Click OK to apply. And adjust the height at floor level for the plinth. We can then hook in the next cabinets using the automatic hook points, which use the overall dimensions of the cabinets. We'll then be able to define the spaces where we want to position the kitchen units, such as the fridge. We'll be using cover panels here, so let's position a panel on the right-hand cabinet, which we will be configuring according to the overall dimensions of the cabinet down to the floor, and then extend it forwards and backwards and adjust it in height using the points section. Once the first side has been created, we can duplicate it and move it manually or using the move tool. Once the space has been created, we can then position the fridge using the rotation tools and, if necessary, the flip function. Once positioned, the cabinets can be resized as required without changing the structure of the cabinet. The assemblies will of course be updated as in cabinet mode. Once adjusted, we can position a decorative panel. This can be readjusted to the height of the cabinets. Over to the other side of the kitchen, we've already added a series of simple top cabinets and beside those a corner cabinet. We can select all of these and resize the height of the entire group. They all update along with all component parts. And lastly here, let's add another cover panel to finish off the design. We'll now move on to the left hand section which has a particular position and angle, so we'll use a temporary base using the walls function to help us. Position the first point in relative angle mode, then a second, and we'll adjust to a length of 710mm for the starting point of the cabinets. Then add a third point to define the total length of 2100mm. Delete the initial point. Once you've drawn the line, you can define the width of the base, 435mm, and the height, 80mm, on which you'll position the various cabinets. We then need to 
position and orientate the first cabinet using the duplicate function, which retains the orientation of the initial cabinet. Once positioned, the temporary plinth can be removed to add various finishing elements such as the side panels and worktop. Let's continue this project with the creation and installation of a central island. Let's start by positioning the first cabinet in the corner of the room to position it more easily at 1,381mm from the right and 1,360mm from the top. We'll just put those dimensions into the cabinet position window here and click OK to apply. To finish off we're adjusting the depth slightly too. Then add the other cabinets and finally position the cover panel on the right. In view of the particular shape of the central island, we once again use a DXF import to create the shaped elements. For the corner angle, we create a new free shape cabinet and select a manufacturing method with a cabinet box full sub method like so. We now select the shape using the DXF tool. Select all the segments to define it as a back type, then the two lengths as a side type. All that's left to do is add reinforcements and adjust the height. We can use the vertical measurement tool to measure the height. Double click to open the cabinet and switch to cabinet mode, where we adjust the cabinet box full sub method and add the shelves. We can then adjust the height using the obtained dimension. All we need to do now is position the cabinet in our project, then add the cover panel by duplicating the right hand cover panel. We'll move it into position here, then rotate it to fit. For the worktop with this particular shape, we use the same procedure as for the corner cabinet to create a free shape cabinet. Select the worktop shape using the DXF. Select all the segments and define them as fronts. We will only retain the cabinet top here. We can then create an opening with inner tooling and position a material in it to simulate the cooking plate. We'll then move it over the surface of the material. And once finished, we can hang it on our previous cabinets. With its flexibility and simple editing tools, Polyboard offers a fast and accurate way to design custom kitchen projects. Thanks for watching.